Part 3. Cleaning and inspecting your carburetor. For this you will need the following. Old toothbrush, carburetor cleaner, spray and bucket, bladed screwdriver, small piece of brass wire, cloth rag, eye protection, and rubber gloves. Yep, it's rubber glove time again. And this time you'll also want some eye protection and a metal pan or a sink. If you haven't already, split all your parts into two groups. Group number one, you're going to want all the metal parts such as the carburetor body, bowl, jets, float section. Group two, you're going to want all your gaskets, rubber bits, and mixed metal rubber bits as well. Now grab group one and place them in a metal basket of the parts cleaning bucket and place the basket in the bucket. We're going to let these soak at least an hour at this time. So set your watch or iPhone. Check parts at the end of the hour. If they still seem a bit gunky, let them stand overnight. Afterwards, pull the basket out and let the parts dry in a well-ventilated space. Furthermore, if needed, use an old toothbrush to scrub them down and redunk parts as needed as well. Take all your metal parts and start with the carburetor body. In a well-ventilated space, take the carburetor body and place it in a metal sinker pan. Start to spray the carburetor cleaner into the three holes where the jets go. Spray liberally. At this point, you're mainly trying to clean out the main internal areas of the carburetor body. Then take one of those old toothbrushes and start scrubbing. Next up, we're going to want to clean out the jets. Ideally, you should be able to do this with one of the old toothbrushes. Make sure that the little bristles make their way through the holes in the jets. This should clean everything out. Optionally, if you're not getting things cleaned here, then you're going to want to use a little brass wire. Lastly, we're going to want to check the main slide for odd wear or damage. Take the slide only and gently reinsert it back into the carburetor. Make sure it slides in and out of the carburetor body easily. Lastly, you're going to want to check all of your gaskets. If you've already bought a uh, gasket kit, go ahead and check the old ones and replace with the new. Part 4 reassembly. So you've cleaned everything and replaced everything that needs to be replaced and now it's time to rebuild your carburetor back to new. For building you will need the following tools. Bladed screwdriver, socket wrench with 8mm head or 8mm spanner, small needle nose pliers, rubber gloves. As a note before getting started, please be careful with screwing anything back into the carburetor body and do not over tighten anything. Many of the parts on the carburetor are made from softer metals and can distort and damage easily. Second note, I am providing a schismatic of the Delorto SH20 as well as the JetX22 carburetor at this point. So if at any point you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can use this as reference. First up, we're going to rebuild the slide for your car. Start by replacing the small rubber gasket in the top piece and then sliding the pin slide through the top piece. Next, you'll want to screw the throttle arm into the carburetor top piece as well as the pin slide. Full assembly here for the slide is going to be made up of the slide, the spring, the pin slide, and front piece. Next, connect the slide to the rod and the spring. These will then slide into the carburetor body. Hold tight, then using a bladed screwdriver, you should be able to assemble this into the carburetor. Pull on the pin slide and make sure that the slide glides safely and effortlessly. Next up, you're going to want to reattach the air adjustment screw to the side of the carburetor. You should be able to use your fingers here to screw this all the way back in. Once back in, take a bladed screwdriver and unscrew it between a half a revolution and 1.5 rev revolutions. The next step is to reassemble the banjo. Start by grabbing the inlet banjo and place the larger round gasket on the inside lid. Next up, you'll place a plastic filter back into the body where the inlet banjo connects up. Lastly, place the small round gasket on the screw and you can now start to screw the banjo to the carburetor body. Next step, turn the carburetor over and we'll reinstall all of the jets. Take each jet and slide them into the respective holes. Using a bladed screwdriver, you can now tighten them in. We'll follow this up by attaching the float needle to the plastic float and then placing them together in the float assembly. Depending on your carburetor, you can probably slide the float pivot pin in with your hands, but in some cases you might need to use a pair of needle nose pliers to slide this into place. Next up, grab the float bowl and replace the rubber seal around the edge. Now take the float bowl and align it to the floats, jets, so forth in your carburetor body. Once you've aligned it, you should be able to slide the two screws through and you should be able to tighten this to the carburetor body.
Part five, time to reattach your carburetor to your Lambretta. For this, you will need the following. A bladed and Phillips head screwdriver, following spanner wrenches, an eight millimeter socket wrench, needle nose pliers, small rag, rubber work gloves. Optionally, rubber hammer, two stroke oil, and some sort of mat. After all, who wants to sit on the ground? Let's start with rubber gloves. You know what to do with these. First up, let's start by grabbing the carburetor and reattaching the throttle to the carb body. Slide the throttle cable through the cable adjuster found at the top of the carburetor. Once pulled through, reattach the rubber grommet. Then depress the throttle arm so that you can slide the nipple on the end into the throttle cable arm. Next up, we're going to reattach the choke assembly. Ideally, you didn't take this apart when you pulled the carburetor off the scooter. So, ideally, you should be able to slide this whole unit back in and then use a 10 millimeter spanner to reattach this. If you did take this apart, here's how you're going to have to put it all back together. To do this, slide the choke cable through the L-bend, then the L-bend to the choke cable adjuster, then to the adjust the adjuster lock nut, and then to the choke top, to the choke return spring, and finally the nipple can go into the choke valve. All of this then will slide straight into your carburetor, and you should be able to use a 10 millimeter spanner here to tighten this all up. Next step, we're going to reconnect the fuel line. Attach the end of the fuel line into the inlet banjo. It should simply slide on. But if needed, you can use those needle nose pliers. Now slide the fuel line clamp up so that you can clamp the fuel line to the banjo. Tighten this with either a bladed screwdriver or with a Phillips head. Now we're finally ready to reattach the carburetor to the engine. You can do this a couple different ways. First, start by rubbing a slight bit of two-stroke oil on the manifold. So the first way is you simply slide the carburetor to the inlet with your hands and slowly wiggle and push the carburetor back and forth and back and forth and push and push and eventually it should make its way on. The second way to do this is to seat the carburetor to the manifold. Now take a rag and place it over the mouth of the carburetor. Now take a rubber mallet and lightly tap, and I do mean lightly tap, the rag over the carburetor mouth until the carburetor is fully seated on the manifold. Next step, use either an 8mm spanner or a socket wrench and tighten the carburetor clamp. Time to reconnect the air filter and the rubber hose. Slide the air filter to the top of the air hose. Then slide the air filter to the air box. Clamp this down with the metal clamp. Part 6. We're in the final stretch here. For this, you'll need the following tools. Key, bladed screwdriver, and for once, no work gloves. Insert key and turn to the on position. Pull out your choke. Twist fuel lever to the on position. Kick over your engine until it starts up. Using a flat bladed screwdriver, adjust the idle screw as needed. Using a bladed screwdriver again, adjust the air screw mixture as needed. Now put your cowls back on and you're ready to go.